Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. You don't have to growl any more, Bluff, because we are going to move to the country. Just as soon as we take David to lunch with Hartley, it's all going to be forgotten. David promised to listen to Hartley's advice. Oh! <gasps> Oh, I hope he won't be too disappointed when he hears it. Taxi! Hey, taxi, are you taking... David! I mean, uh, yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Hey, since when is our convertible a taxi? That's fine, taxi. I, I want you to drive me three times around the park and then take me to the Calumet Club, and uh, I have to be there in three minutes, but no, 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 don't hurry. Jump right in, sir. Mm-hmm. I have. I don't know how you talked me into letting you take you take the car. I thought we agreed you weren't going to do any more driving. I'm only going right home. You better have. I'm going to call you there the minute I'm through lunch. I'm just dying to hear what Hartley's going to say about the house. What's so worth dying about and what Hartley says? Well, I think Hartley's pretty smart about houses and things like that. I know, but I've been thinking about it all morning and... I don't exactly see why we should be too upset just because Hartley doesn't like it. But, David, you said at breakfast that Hartley's very smart about investments and money and all that. That's what buying a house is, isn't it? Well, it is. And and besides, if we're going to be married to the soil like real farmers, I think the least you can do is ask your brother about taking someone new into the family. Hartley really wouldn't care who we brought into the family, except for you. As far as Hartley's concerned, there are only two kinds of people. The people who have stomach trouble and other people. That's a very nice way to talk about your brother. (laughs) Hartley would be the first to admit it. I'm just trying to tell you that we shouldn't put off buying a farmhouse just because uh, it has a gravity spring instead of a stomach pump. But but if he does like it, wouldn't you feel a lot better about buying it? Mm, Not particularly. You know you would. I would. Well, we'll listen to what Hartley says and then use our own judgment. But I hope you won't be too disappointed if he thinks we shouldn't buy it. Oh, David, I know I won't be disappointed. I hope you won't be. Don't worry about me. David, why does Hartley belong to a club? Why can't men read their newspapers at home? Mm -hmm. They get asked too many questions. I think they'd love to be asked questions. Do you? Of course. People only ask questions when they think you know the answers. Nobody ever asked me any. I wonder why. I wonder. Well, here we are at the Calumet Club. Just pull over, driver, and let me out. Here you are, sir. Mm -hmm. Many thanks, driver. Oh, sir, you're too generous. Now, you go right on home, and don't drive around. Give Hartley my love. And David, Mm -hmm. good luck. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I'm the guest of Mr. Norton, Mr. Hartley Norton. Mr. Norton? One moment, sir, while I look at the board. Oh, yes. Mr. Norton, I'm afraid, has not come in yet. Oh, well, I'll I'll wait for him here. Wouldn't you prefer to wait for Mr. Norton in the lounge, sir? S- certainly, if that's all right. I'm not a member, you know. Quite all right, sir. If you will follow me. Just this way, sir. I hope I don't wake anyone. I think we shall be all right, sir. Now, if you will walk right in. Thanks very much. I'll wait for Mr. Norton in here, then. I'll tell him you are here, sir. 
Silence is golden. The evening... David, I'm very sorry to be oh. late. Hello, Hartley. It's all right. I just got here. Have they bound and gagged you? You don't have to be afraid to talk up. <laughs> I've been afraid of waking up some of the gentlemen in the armchairs. Oh, those. They'd like it, I guess, I think. They're only happy when there's somebody to glare at. <laughs> Let's go right downstairs. Fine, fine. Uh, David, I can't see why you won't join here. It's really a very nice club. Oh, I'm sure of that, Hartley. Seems very nice. Excellent chef, too. The doctor sends him a copy of my diet directly. Well, here we are. Good day, Mr. Norton. Luncheon for two? Yes, Albert. Right here, Mr. Norton, by the window, sir. Will this be all right? All right for you, David? Mm, it's excellent. You certainly have a fine view of the park here. Well, David, we haven't had lunch together in a long time, have we? Or have we? I can't remember when the last time was, actually. I think it was just before I got married and you went abroad. It's quite a view of the park, isn't it? Mm-hmm. By the way, what's this story Julia was telling me about a farm in Connecticut? What story, Hartley? Julia said something about meeting Claudia. Claudia saying that you were about to buy a little farm in Connecticut. She seemed to think that you were planning to live there. I told her somebody got something mixed up. Someone certainly did. It's not a little place at all. It's 80 acres. 80 acres? Mm Mm-hmm. That's a good-sized farm for Connecticut. Rather large for weekends, isn't it? Can't see what you need with such a place now. Neither can Julia. We're not going up for weekends, Hartley. We're planning to live there all the time. Live there? You mean you're serious about it? (laughs) We certainly are. Why, don't you think it's a good idea? Well, it's a little sudden. And then you're buying at the top of the market. As a matter of fact, I think we can get a bargain, Hartley. The man who owns it wants to sell it for personal reasons. The place has been in his family for generations. Well, some of those very old colonial houses have very fine lines. They're a temptation to people from New York to come up and play cute all over the place. I must say I don't like that. What about the grounds? Have you got a better view than this? Than Central Park, you mean? And the park doesn't give one any trouble. It's not up to me to get a gardener to keep the grounds clean. David, whenever I've bought a place, I've regretted it. The trouble is that you think of grounds, Hartley, and we're thinking of land. You think we're buying a place to sit on and be looked at. We're thinking of buying a place to work on, to make, to claim as our own. You sound serious, David. Does Claudia want to do it as much as you? Yes. Well, my experience is a little bit different. Tell me about your (laughs) ground... Your land. (laughs) Well, we've got a little bit of everything, Hartley. A hill? With a walnut grove on top of it. And fields on the slope and grazing land. You haven't got a brook, have you? We have. With a gravity spring. If I had a place, I'd want a brook. But Julia says they're very messy. Always overflow. And in the spring, frogs and so on. I've always wanted one anyway. Well, you see, the mess won't matter so much to us. I know. Land again. What are you going to raise? Oh, I think we'll start off with one cow. You better feel your way along with the farming. Tell me about that hill of yours. What can you see from the top? We've got a real Connecticut view. Fairly broad valley, I suppose, with farmland. Stone fences. White houses and red barns. And a wooden church with big windows and a square steeple. You can just see it on the on the other side of the valley. What a wonderful place to bring up children. And you're going to have children. Yes. And your neighbors, what are they like? I don't know, hardly. They're just neighbors, I guess. You didn't see any brand new station wagons, did you, with elegant names painted on them? No, not the other day. Nor any very low license numbers, either. You're sure those farms you saw aren't really golf clubs, and that (laughs) when you talk about farming, you don't mean getting in about 60 other people to do the work. I do not. You're not planning to make the barn into a studio and the horse stall into a bar room and the garden patch into a tennis court. No, we aren't. Well, and this isn't a fad, is it? It's not just more of the same. No, Hartley, it it isn't. Hmm. How much are they asking? Fifteen. I I want to offer ten. 
That's what I wanted to see you about. You think it's too much? I don't think it is. It may not even be enough. Be ready to bid as much as you have to. You have the money left from Father's estate, haven't you? And of course, I... Uh, go- oh, hardly. Well, what's the matter? You old fox, you had me completely bewildered. How's that? Well, ever since I came in here, we've been fencing back and forth like a couple of strangers. You started by telling me that we were buying at the top of the market. Then you threw a lot of cold water on us. and Then you end up by telling me to go out and pay more than I wanted to in the first place. Well, I didn't know what you wanted the place for, David. If it was just a place to go weekends, I think it's too much money. And I'd hate to see you and Claudia get in that rut. You don't belong in it. But if it's for land and not grounds... If this is the way you and Claudia want to live, then you ought to grab it. I'd rather you see you waste a dollar than a minute. Hardly, I... Well, it's one of those moments when I feel as though I found a brother. I feel the same, David. I suppose it's a shame, too, that we both sound so surprised. Surprised? Say, Claudia will really be surprised when she hears what you've been saying. You haven't any idea how excited and happy it's going to make her, Hartley. Go call her right now and tell her what a lucky husband I think she has. David, don't try to answer this, but you know how lucky you are. Now get to that phone. It's just behind that tower. I'm getting. <laughs> Plaza 5597, please. <laughs> the farmer takes a... Oh, hello. Hello, darling. Did uh, Bluff get the car home all right? <laughs> yeah, of course, that's why I called. And to tell you thanks for suggesting this talk with Hartley. Yeah, he made everything very clear. Yes, darling. Thanks to you. I'm taking Hartley's advice, and we're going right ahead. I'm sending in my bid tonight. We're going to buy the farm. Claudia? Claudia? Claudia, what's wrong? Has something happened? Are you all right? This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Sociability flourishes when Coke is passed round. No need to bother with glasses. Just bring on the frosty bottles and an opener, and guests are all set for the pause that refreshes. But be sure you have plenty of Coca-Cola in the refrigerator because it always goes fast. Ask the man of the house to have a case put in the car next time he stops at the service station, or order a case from your grocer. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs> <laughs> 